Hi guys, welcome back. So today is a part two of the video that I did two days ago about rating new and viral Middle Eastern perfumes. So if you haven't seen that one, I'm gonna link it down below so you can check it out. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Joanna and I do reviews and recommendations of affordable and luxury fragrances in my channel. Now, if that sounds your jam, then please do keep watching and maybe consider subscribing. So in the first video, I reviewed nine Middle Eastern perfumes. So basically today I'm gonna do 10, okay? And some of them are in sample sizes and some are in big bottles. The big bottles are mainly because I love the sample so much that I ended up getting a big bottle. It's an exciting video because I'll be talking about a lot of viral perfumes. Yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. First off is Affection by Latafa Pride. Okay, for sure you've seen this everywhere in YouTube for a reason. And since you saw me having a bottle, this is a win. Mm. This is how I wanted the Kayali Yam Pistachio to smell like. Um, in case you didn't know yet, this is apparently a dupe of Kayali Yam Pistachio Gelato. And I must say that Latafa nailed it on this one. Um, because this doesn't just smell like Kayali Yam. This is also better than Kayali Yam. Um, this to me is creamier and nuttier um, and more potent as well. I like the Kayali Yam Pistachio. However, it wasn't that big love for me to buy a big bottle. Um, but Affection though really gives me what I wanted. This to me is a creamier, more gourmand version of Kayali Yam. This has definitely that pistachio and hazelnut making this fragrance very nutty. But at the same time, it has a very lactonic vibe. I think it's because it has heavy lactonic notes that is not really clearly um, described in the note breakdown. Mm, it has vanilla and tonka bean, some jasmine in there as well that makes it a little bit floral, but still, you know, maintaining that gourmandish vibe. I really, really love this one. And this is the rare case that I will recommend the dupe better than the original. And I can assure you that this one really projects. I got compliments already while wearing this, so I know that people can really smell me. I highly recommend this. For example, you love um, Kayali Yam Pistachio, of course, and lactonic fragrances such as Zadig and Voltaire, this is her, or like Commodities Milk. You're gonna love this one. And come on guys, with the price, this is still good for a Latafa perfume, around 30 euros. So highly recommend. And I'm gonna give this one a 10 out of 10. Yeah, guys, that's how much I love this. Um, Latafa Pride Affection. Next perfume is a sample size. And I've been always dying to try this fragrance, okay? But, you know, something is holding me back not to buy a full bottle. So this is Eternal Oud by Latafa. And if you guys don't know yet, this is inspired by my son Francisco de John Grandsois. It has a quite harsh opening, um, a little bit fruity because of the plum and grapefruit in the opening. It has heliotrope and orchid in the mid. In the base, it has amber, oud, labdanum, benzoin, vanilla, and tonka bean, which is basically like the notes that made up Grand Soir. And for me, this is not a one-to-one -one dupe of Grand Soir. Mm, it has a harsh opening. However, guys, though, the dry down is really, really good. And it is close. You know, I have a sample of Grand Soir because this is in my wish list for quite some time now. And I actually compare them side by side 
um, many times already. Just, you know, for me to be able to give you my final um, opinion about this. And I must say that in this case, I prefer Grand Soi more. Mm. It's just that Grand Soi is more rich, potent, and well blended. There's a big difference when it comes to the scent quality between the two. Even though this is a nice scent, like don't get me wrong guys, this is nice. Uh, and I think this is around 30 or 40 euros, but I think it didn't beat Grand Soi. First of all, this one doesn't have a harsh opening and the dry down of this is just rich, mature and luxurious and it's uncomparable. So having said that, I'm still gonna rate Eternal Oud an 8 out of 10 um, because it is a nice perfume, I think. Um, I'm giving it 8 just because I'm comparing it to Grand Soi. But I think if I don't compare them, I can give this one a 9. Because it smells really good and it has an amazing longevity and projection, guys. However, it takes time for this perfume to settle on the skin to get the most out of it, in my opinion. But I think once it settles in, you will really get beautiful wafts throughout the day. Oh, by the way, I forgot to even describe to you guys how this smells like. Basically, this is very resinous amber that just smells sensual to me. So if you love ambery sensual scents, you're gonna love this one. An 8 out of 10 for me and I won't be getting a full bottle of this because in my opinion, it is still worth it to buy MFK's Grand Soi instead. Yeah, so that is Latafa um, Eternal Wood. Okay, next up is by Afnan and this is called Rare Tiffany. And you guys, I've been meaning to sample this fragrance as well as I've heard so many good things about it. And what can I say? This one is really, really beautiful, I must say. Mm, it has ylang ylang, jasmine, rose, Having said that, it's very floral, but at the same time, it is heavy as well in musk, sandalwood, and vanilla with a little zing coming from the ginger and pink pepper and sweetened by caramel. Um, I love this fragrance. I really, really do. And it is giving me like designer vibe, but you know, Mm, it is a kind of designer that I would love to have in my collection because it is such a likable scent. It is such an easy reach as well. Mm, really nice. I wish though I didn't have um, Tiffany uh, perfume because I feel like they are actually the same or maybe that's why this is called Tiffany, because this is inspired by Tiffany & Co's um, perfume. Because, guys, this is just the more potent version of Tiffany. Like, I compared them side by side, because when I sprayed this, I was like, it smells good, but it smells like something that I have. And then I figured it out. The thing is, nobody has mentioned that they are actually similar. Not even in Fragrantica, I think. And guys, um, I love this one. And this is one of the fragrances in today's video that I really love to the point that I'm going to give this a 10 out of 10. If you are into feminine fragrances that are not too indolic or meaning not too floral, I highly recommend you checking this one out because I am really vibing with this fragrance. This to me smells like a pretty girl. It smells like Tiffany. And if I don't have Tiffany, I'm gonna buy this one. Or actually, I am considering buying this one because this one is better. 
definitely better than Tiffany because this one lasts and it projects very well, guys. Um, not in a beast mode level, but you will definitely be smelled. And this lasts for more than eight hours. So I highly recommend you checking this one out if you haven't already, because this has been out for quite some time. Um, yeah, this is Afnan Rare Tiffany. Really, really good one, guys. 10 out of 10. All right, so the next one is the flanker of Rare Tiffany, and this is called Rare Passion. This is released, I think, late last year, and I was always curious about this fragrance. And this one smells beautiful as well. This has rose orange musk, which, mm, yes, I am really getting. Mm, and also it has vanilla, amber, woody notes, musk, um, orange, blossom, and rose again in the base. Um, what can I say? You will love this fragrance if you are into roses, like me. I find this very beautiful. I am getting some marshmallow and like fluffy um, effect in it as well even though it's not even though marshmallow is not listed i'm not getting woody notes in here it is mainly rose marshmallow and um clean and sweet musk mm, i must say that i find this rose scent very unique mm, because it is combined with a sweet musk that is almost like marshmallowy. And actually, if you check in Fragrantica, people are comparing this to Parfums de Marley's Oriana. And they are not similar at all to me, guys. Maybe that marshmallow vibes, but you know, Oriana is like full on marshmallow, in my opinion while this one has that um powdery rose and a little bit fluffiness i love this one actually but i have an issue because i find this one not as long lasting as the sister um so um having said that i will only give this nine out of 10 because even though I really love the scent I won't be buying this one because I have a lot of rose uh, fragrances in my collection because I love my rose scents at this point I don't need another rose fragrance that won't project let me just put it that way mm, very nice I will highly recommend if you are still looking for that um, rose perfume from the Middle Eastern um, market. This and the Latafa Mora Silky Rose are really good options. Um, yeah, so that is Rare Passion uh, 9 out of 10. Next up is Latafa's Ausaf. I haven't really heard anybody talking about this fragrance, but I was just curious because the notes seem appealing to me because it has violet and pink pepper, tonka bean, um, agarwood, and patchouli. So I was like, mm, I might like that one. So I chose it as a sample as well. You guys, this one is heavy in that chocolate uh, patchouli. However, it's not earthy. This is actually a, a very well blended kind of patchouli. Mm, I can get some spices as well along with the pink pepper and the violet. It smells very nice guys. Mm, it smells like spicy cola with chocolatey patchouli. Yeah that's that's how it smells like so if you are into patchouli you will love this one 
and even though it has a violet note um, i don't get that much violet note in here um, or maybe just in the beginning however it fades what you're gonna get in the dry down is mainly um, spices um, oak moss musk and chocolatey patchouli so if that sounds interesting to you then you might love this one and i don't find this um similar to any other fragrances that i have but it's not uh, an extremely unique fragrance as well in my opinion it is great however it didn't like appeal to me that much um, so i won't be getting a full bottle of this but it smells great guys and if my description sounds uh, appealing to you i highly recommend you checking this one out when it comes to longevity and projection it is moderate um the lasting power is quite good around six to eight hours and the projection is moderate i find this unisex and i'm gonna rate this one an eight out of ten this is al Ausaf by latafa the next fragrance is by Rasasi and it's called Kasamat Ebhar. I was so intrigued to try out this one because a lot of you recommended this to me. And what can I say? It is nice. It is giving me that sparkly um, apple and sweet vanilla vibes. This to me is Swiss Arabian's Casablanca. Casablanca smells the same so if you have casablanca you don't need this and if ever you are choosing between the two since for me they are the same guys even the longevity and projection for me is kind of same maybe the casablanca lasts just a little bit longer just go for the one that is cheaper where you live in my opinion, I will go for Casablanca more. But I know as well that this can be like more expensive in some countries. Just check the price, guys. And anyway, um, yeah, so that is Rosassi's Casamat Ebhar. Next up is Latafa's Assad. And I am always curious about this, guys, because I know that this is very famous for men and for a reason because this is a dupe of Dior Sauvage Elixir and what can I say I am so intrigued by this one mm, and I let my husband try it as well because he doesn't have um, Dior Sauvage but he never liked that anyway mm, and to be honest for me as well even though I love the scent I just don't want my husband, for example, to smell like this because this is very common here where we live. I smell this fragrance a lot when we go out. So that is basically the reason why it doesn't appeal to me or it doesn't appeal to him as well. However, I must say that this is a very good alternative to Dior Sauvage Elixir. And I let my man wore this um, the other night and it was very good. It was projecting really strong. Yes, this is approved to me as a dupe of Sauvage Elixir. However, um, not for me or for my husband, just because everybody's wearing Sauvage Elixir or everybody's wearing Sauvage from where we live. Oh, by the way, I didn't even um, explain to you the scent of this. Basically, if you're not yet familiar, this is black pepper, tobacco, a little bit pineapple-y, patchouli, coffee, and iris heavy. Like, you're gonna get all those notes in this fragrance. Mm, it is woody, but at the same time, to my nose, this is more um, tobacco, black pepper, and um, patchouli. I really don't get um, coffee in here. So having said that, it's nice. However, I'm not going to buy a full bottle because the husband doesn't like it as well. And a lot of men are wearing this fragrance from where we live. So yeah, 
I'm going to rate Assad an 8.5 out of 10. Next perfume, guys. Oh, I'm so excited to talk to you about this one because this is a big love for me. And this is called Lin by Latafa. Um, guys, if you follow my channel, you know that I'm not really into floral perfumes. Oh, but this one is really good. And it really, really got me. This has a very prominent jasmine. However, it has that refreshing mango note along with turmeric and bergamot and ginger that just smells so refreshing, uplifting, and pretty. I love this fragrance, guys. Mm. In the base, it has sandalwood, musk, and incense as well. Mm. This smells like a beautiful woman wearing a linen dress. What I'm getting is mainly jasmine and a little bit two bros, okay? This has two bros, okay? However, it is not annoying me. And the ginger in here is just perfect to give this fragrance that little bit of zing and turmeric. Oh, this smells incredible. Yes, it might have that um, designer vibes, but I'm really liking this. It has a designer vibe, but not like the typical designer vibe now that we are having uh, in the market. You know what? This actually reminds me of Dior's Jador Law. So if you love that fragrance, you might like this one. They are not dupes, but to me, they have the same vibe. I like this one even better this will shine in the spring and summertime um such a, a pretty scent i find it very likable and like an easy reach as well this one i will consider buying a full bottle i'm just gonna wait for the spring time to come and i will definitely get a bottle of this mm. this definitely smells sophisticated and elegant um floral fragrance that is not endolic it is just very well balanced with the sandal mood and musk in the base really love this musky fresh floral fragrance from the tafa and this is called lean and to me this is a 10 out of 10 guys highly recommend if my description sounds beautiful to you I saved the last two for last because I find them quite um, intriguing because I feel like they're the same. And these two are Latafa Liam Silver or Grey and the other one is Latafa Pride Niche Emirati Antique. So um, I started with the decant of this and I decided to go for Liam Silver. Now, let me tell you what I think of them. Um, they are both inspired by BDK's Gris Chanel. And to be honest, when you check the notes, they are quite similar. They have cardamom, figs, black tea, like those are the main notes in here, plus the vanilla and the sandalwood, okay? I think the difference is that the Latafa Niche Emirati has, has coconut milk and caramel note, while Liam Gray has patchouli and labdanum. That's the difference regarding the note. Okay, now let me just talk about Latafa Liam first. This is definitely giving me that BDK Gris Charnel vibe. So if you are not familiar with how it smells like, it is basically fig, cardamom, um, sandalwood, and black tea. So if a chai latte smell appeals to you, you're gonna love this DNA. And yes, this is definitely a dupe of Gris Charnel. 
and I'm gonna approve it. The only difference is that this is a little bit sweeter um, and vanillic, but still it has that unisex vibe in it. Now, when it comes to antique, this has a coconut milk and caramel note that makes this different from Liam. But I'm telling you, even if it has that caramel note, it doesn't really make a big difference. Not unless you put your nose like stuck in your skin or in the spade area. And also the opening of this smells like um, more of the extra BBK. So it is giving more masculine vibe only in the beginning guys but in the dry down this and this smells exactly the same the only difference is that if you smell yourself closer you're gonna get the caramel note that is coming from this one for me this doesn't smell creamier than this one um, in the air, they smell the same. Uh, I did a wear test um, two days in a row. And to be honest, <laughs> there's not much of a big difference, guys. Like, even though, okay, let's say this is a little bit more potent, but you know, I'm talking about 2 or 3% more potent than this because this one really feels lighter and airier by the way would you like a deep comparison of this two i can make a separate video just to compare in a deeper manner but anyway i find this one a little bit lighter um they are not very far from each other you do not need both okay once again you do not need both you can just easily choose which one you prefer more. This one is 23 euros. This one is 60 euros with an antique looking bottle. So um, yeah, there you go. I hope I made sense. For me, I choose Liam Silver because it's almost half the price and in the air, they smell exactly the same. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to rate this one. I'm gonna rate Liam Gray nine out of 10 while antique will get a 9 out of 10 as well so that ends my review of all the middle eastern perfumes that i've been trying last month um january and yes i'm just so happy to finally give you my final thoughts about this 19 perfumes and by the way guys i have a playlist of middle eastern perfumes in my channel which I'm going to link down below just in case you want to dive into more Middle Eastern perfumes, okay? Um, thank you so much for watching and I hope that I helped someone decide today or the other day in getting a Middle Eastern perfume. Um, let me know what you think of this. Thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already and see you on my next one. Bye guys!